Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdeff again. Well, I think you can see from that previous video that these are not directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, we have some technical difficulties and some little blemishes and odd little things that happen. So uh, I was having trouble with uh, sharing my screen on the previous video, so it ended kind of abruptly. Uh, this is the second part of the video that I was trying to create on simple rational functions. And I hope now it will work when I share my screen. So let's try that. And here we are. So things are now working much better. Now, in the previous video, we drew by hand the graph of two fairly simple functions. We looked at y equal one over x, and this is a more professional graph of the same thing. Notice that we do go through the point one, one and the point negative one, negative one, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, very, very similar to what we drew by hand. Uh, we also though looked at y equal one over x uh, squared and see we have the two branches here that are in the second, the first and second quadrants rather than the first and the third. It might be interesting to see what happens when we increase the exponents. Uh, you, you're going to notice some very similar things to what happened with polynomial functions. And in particular, it's going to depend on whether the power is even or odd. So what about one over x to the fourth power, just to show another one. So I've got a blue graph and a green graph. Notice they both include the point one, one and negative one, negative one. The green one rises more quickly um, and, uh, the, and gets closer to the x-axis. That's very, very similar to what we saw with uh, polynomial functions like y equal x squared, y equal x to the fourth and so forth. Uh, maybe one more of these, just to sort of get the hang of it. Y equal one, uh, whoops, over x raised to the six, maybe. And that one is in the purple. Notice that again, it gets more close to the x-axis and seems to take off more quickly. So it gets closer. Another way to say that is it gets closer to the uh, vertical asymptote more slowly because it's rising faster. Um, let's look at some uh, odd exponents just to get the hang of this. Here's y equal uh, 1 over x again. Um, so just y equal x. I actually need to clear out some stuff. It's too hard. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So there's y equal 1 over x that we've seen before. What happens if we have y equal 1 over x to the third? Mm, notice that it hugs the x-axis more quickly and takes off faster, which means it is slower at getting to the x-axis, uh, the y-axis, sorry, as a vertical asymptote, but similar in shape. And maybe one more of those, y equal one over x to the fifth. So the point is that when you have an equation y equal one over x to let's say the n, where n is an integer. If the integer is odd, you end up with similar shapes to y equal one over x and everything is in quadrants one and three. But if the exponent is even, they're all similar to one over x squared and everything is in quadrants one and two. So we're gonna focus really all of our attention on y equal one over x and y equal one over x squared as sort of our key graphs. So, with that in mind, let's go back to our hand camera. And I want to look at, see what happens if we start with those basic graphs like y equal 1 over x, but we adjust some things. What if instead of just y equal 1 over x, we had y over uh, 1 over x plus 3 minus two. So you would have to have the feeling that the graph would be very similar to y equal one over x and we know what that looks like. And to get a quick sketch of that, I'm going to suggest that we just look at a couple values of x and y 
negative one and one, remembering that zero gives me a value that's undefined, and I get negative one and positive one, and remembering the general shape of that, that's enough points to kind of get a general feel. The graph goes through these two points and crosses the X and, or excuse me, approaches the X and Y axes as asymptotes, vertical and horizontal. So I know that kind of looks like that. So this graph must look similar to that, but these numbers do something. And very much like everything we've looked at, if you add or subtract a number inside the function, the effect that that will have will be to shift the graph left or right. If you have a number at the end of the function just tacked on in the end, that's gonna have the effect of moving the graph up or down. So the fact that I have a x plus three here means that I'm going to shift the graph three units left. Remember that goes opposite. And the negative two on the end is going to mean, I'm going, it's going, to mean that I'm going to shift the graph two down. So shift two down. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Now, the way we usually have done this in other graphs is we've always looked at the origin because there's all in, in the basic graph, there's usually a point at the origin and think about first where that goes. We can still think about where the origin goes, but there's no point there. There's not a point on the graph there. However, what does happen is as the graph moves, the entire asymptote structure moves along with it. So if you start by identifying where the origin would move to and recognize that the entire asymptote structure goes along with it, then sketching the graph is not too hard. So the origin is ordinarily at the origin, but if I shift that three units left and two units down, I end up right here. Now it's not that that's a point on the graph, but that's going to be the new origin which means that my entire asymptote structure shifts along with it. And I'm gonna use a dotted line or a dashed line rather to show how my asymptote st structure shifts as the origin shifts three left and two down. At the very end, we're gonna graph this uh, professionally and we'll see how that goes. But if you move the entire asymptote structure, then another couple key points and you can get the general shape of the graph. So much like we have seen before, when we see a point like negative one, negative one, what we really want to think about is that relative to the origin, that means that there's a point one unit to the left and one unit down from there. If the origin has moved to here, there would still be a point one unit to the left and one unit down from that new origin. Similarly, this point relative to the origin is one unit right, one unit up. So relative to my new origin, there would be a point one unit right and one unit up. And then for a quick sketch, if I know that my graph basically looks like this approaching the asymptotes, this would be a graph that would approach this asymptote and then turn and approach that asymptote. And similarly, over here. And that's not graphing a whole lot of points, but it's just to get a rough sense. So very easy, just using our ideas of shifts. And we're also going to bring in reflections and uh, stretches as well in the next example. So once you've done this, there's some pretty obvious side questions you can answer. You could ask what are, what is the equation of say the vertical asymptote? The vertical asymptote is a line. And so as a line, as a vertical line, it will have to have an equation of the form X equals something. So you see how so many things tie together. And because it goes through negative three on the x-axis, the vertical asymptote is at negative three, x equal negative three. The uh, horizontal asymptote by the same token is a line. It's a horizontal line. Equations of horizontal lines begin in y only, or 
and to make this work, because y equals negative two when you cross the axis, the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equal negative two. You can also refer to the domain, the set of all values of x, and again, as you read along the axis from left to right, all these points are included in the domain except where you get to the vertical asymptote. That's an x value that's not included. Then you continue on. So we would probably have to describe the domain something like this, negative infinity to negative three. That's where the vertical asymptote is. Union negative three to infinity. And by the same token, the range would be, here's, here's my hor uh, horizontal asymptote. So we would go from negative infinity to negative two, union negative two to infinity. All based on knowing what our base graph looks like and the idea of shifts. And in the next example, we'll also employ stretches and reflections. So that's not too hard. Now, the only base graphs we're gonna focus on that are, uh, uh, excuse me, rational functions will be y equal one over x and y equal one over x squared. So this example is gonna build on y equal one over x squared. Let's say y equal negative two over x minus three squared plus six. And let's uh, anticipate everything that's going on here. Well, first of all, we are gonna have a base graph of y equal one over x squared, and we know what that looks like now, but just to get a couple key points, if x is negative one, y is one, if x is one, y is one, and at x equals zero, the graph is undefined, so we know there's an asymptote there, and just to get a rough, rough, rough sketch, the graph goes through these points, approaches the x and y axes as asymptotes. Super sketchy, the graph of y equal one over x squared looks like that. But there are changes indicated in this function. So first of all, because you have a number that's added or subtracted inside the function, that's going to have the effect of shifting the graph so we're gonna think about how the origin shifts and the entire asymptote structure shifts with it. X minus three would mean a shift to the right by three, and the plus six on the end would be a shift up by six. So right three, up six, one, two, three, four, five, six. The new origin ends up right there which means the entire asymptote structure going through that origin shifts the same way. So I would go like this and like this. Like that, just kind of continue this on for a while until I get bored. Okay, those are my new asymptotes. Now there's more to it than that. I have to focus on what this negative two would do. That's a negative two multiplied by your function. The negative indicates that we're going to reflect over the x-axis. We'll think about what that means. And we also have a vertical shift because of the two by a factor of two. So that's all what's going on in that graph. So what does that mean? So in our basic graph, y equal one over x squared, the way we'd want to interpret these points is that the first one is one unit to the left and one unit up from the origin. We will still go one unit left, but if because of that negative sign, instead of going up, we're reflecting, so we're gonna count down. And because of the stretch factor, instead of counting down by one unit, we're gonna go down by two units. So from the new origin, you go one unit left and two units down, and you have a point right there. This point, relative to the origin in the base graph, would be one unit to the right and one unit up from the origin. Again, we measure everything from the new origin. 
So ordinarily we would go one right, one up, but because of the negative two, we're gonna go down instead of up, and we're gonna go two units instead of one because of the stretch. So I've got a point like there. Now the shape is still roughly the same. So what I'm going to do is make sure that the two branches of this graph still approach these lines as asymptotes. So I've got way over here and then finally coming down. And actually, if I was drawing these perfectly, this would look totally symmetrical. There, I'm going to correct myself a little bit, ignore this a little bit, more like that. And the graph would look pretty much like that. So all of these features, uh, the reflecting, the shifting, the stretching, all of those things come into play based on what we've also learned about our rational functions. So just to get a, to finish off, to get a more professional view of those ideas, I'm going to switch cameras and share my screen. And we're going to graph the same things on Desmos. So bring this back up. Here's Desmos. Let's clear out these functions and put new ones in. So the first graph that I graphed was y equal 1 over x plus 3 minus 2. And notice you don't get to see the asymptotes here, which is not quite as nice. But you can see, I think, that the graph is approaching negative 2. y equal negative 2 is a horizontal asymptote. And here's x equal three would be going like this. It approaches that as a vertical asymptote. So it's all stretched around. And then finally, the last one that we drew, let's take a look at this, would be negative two divided by x minus three squared plus six. And look how this looks. I'm going to move my picture out of the way. You can see a little bit better. Um, horizontal asymptote, y equals 6. And vertical asymptote, x equal negative 3. And there you go. So uh, this is a brief lesson on how to graph uh, rational functions of a very simple nature. And uh, I hope that that is very helpful.